apologies. We have an apology from uh, Councillor Wilson and one from Councillor Gary for lateness, which was unnecessary, but thanks for uh, sending that through. Um, I'll move that the apology be accepted. Seconded, Councillor Benson Pope. Uh, any discussion? Those in favour? No. Those against? That's carried. Uh, confirmation of the agenda, and I will note um, that items 9 through 11, uh, which are Part B items, um, the recommendations uh, as per the order paper um, are to approve items that this committee doesn't have the delegated authority to approve. Uh, so as they come through, they will be um, recommendations that Council approve uh, that will be subsequently signed off at the Council meeting on the 31st of October. Um, so just um, noting that, any... And that in regard to Standing Order 2.1, Option C be adopted in relation to moving and seconding and speaking to amendments. Uh, I'll move uh, seconded Councillor Staines. Any discussion? I'll put it all those in favour. Aye. Those against? That is carried. Thank you. Uh, declaration of interest. Um, nobody's registered any new companies over the weekend. No amendments to make. <laughs> No, in which case I'll move that uh, we note the elected members' interest register as attached and confirm the proposed management plan for elected members' interests. Seconded, Councillor Lofiso. Uh, any discussion? I'll put it. All those in favour? Aye. Those against? That is carried. Uh, part A reports. Uh, welcome Dr Griffin uh, to speak to his quarterly report for the Otago Museum. Oh, I haven't, oh, my apologies, sorry. I mean, do come, this won't take long. Um, uh, I need to m move the uh, minutes of the Toitu Otago Settlers Museum Board, 20th of September uh, 2017, um, that the committee note part A items and public forum of the minutes uh, of that meeting. Uh, I'll move that, seconded Councillor Elder. Any discussion? All those in favour? Those against, that is carried. Part A reports, the Otago Museum uh, quarterly report, Dr Griffin. Fantastic to have astronomy on the news headlines this morning. Yes, uh, kia ora, Tato. Um, 130 million years ago, two neutron stars collided and um, the messages were received by Earth back in August. And what's really cool is that there's a link to Otago. Um, you may not appreciate that when those neutron stars spiraled together and flashed and were detected by the LIGO, uh, Laser Interferometric Gravitational Observatory, they were creating gold. So the gold in our gold fields that the wealth of this city is built upon was created in a similar explosion before the Earth was formed. So there you go, a little bit of astronomy. Um, I do apologise for that, but it's, it's a great day. And, I, and I'm only enthusi enthusiastic about this because we've just been programming a sequence into the planetarium for show, shows this afternoon, hopefully, that illustrate this cool thing that's happened. So um, it's great to be here. And can I publicly recognise and acknowledge my colleagues from the cultural sector, um, Jennifer and Cam. Um, we don't often get a chance to kind of come together publicly and I'd just like to recognise the tremendous work that I think both of them are doing and I hope the councillors acknowledge, and this isn't blowing our own trumpet, but I think the cultural sector here in terms of our museums and galleries is really punching uh, above its weight and there's some really cool things going on. I was at the opening at Toy 2 of the, um, the exhibition about World War I and the Belgians a few weeks ago and it's just splendid stuff and I know Cam's doing some super stuff so forgive me, I just, it's great to see everybody in the same room. Um, I've tabled the report. Um, it covers a period when we've just closed our um, Discovery World um, and Tropical Forest Science Centre for redevelopment. So we're right in the middle of that process now. In fact, yesterday, four, a team of four Germans arrived uh, after a 40-hour flight, and they're presently starting to unwrap the new interactive exhibits that were commissioned from, from Germany. And um, we're putting down the carpet uh, we've installed an infinity room, which if you've been to the Omaru um, Steampunk Museum, you've probably seen one of these things. Well, we've got one in our, in our new science centre. So we're rocking and rolling, and we're on schedule for an opening in December, on the 1st of December, all being well. Uh, so while we've been closed and not been able to... We're working very hard behind the scenes to create what we think will be a tremendous facility for not just Dunedin, but for the whole of the South Island. Um, and... 
um, when you consider that between the planetarium and the discovery world redevelopment, uh, that's about three and a half million dollars worth of investment. Um, so it's a significant investment on the part of the museum into um, science ed education for Celsius, and I'm particularly proud of that. Um, the report covers um, a period when there was a lot of activity. Um, the museum's been very successful in obtaining grants to do outreach across not just Otago, but as far afield as um, the Chatham Islands. Um, and that gives us an opportunity to spread the message about what a great best Dunedin and Otago is to places um, that don't normally get science outreach. And that was quite a, an interesting thing. We've done a lot of work around the museum behind the scenes. Um, the Permian Monsters exhibition that is open now for about four weeks has been running very well. And uh, attendance is, even though our prime attraction is shut, um, we're, we're matching the attendances from last year, so we're very pleased about that. Um, looking forward, um, the opening of Discovery World, we hope will get national publicity and possibly international publicity, really raise the profile of the museum. And we look forward to having something open in terms of, for the summer season that brings a lot of people into this city and hopefully gets them really excited about what we're doing. Um, I don't want to go into too much detail in the report. It's a report. If you've got any questions on that, I'm very happy to answer them. But once again, thank you for your support of the museum. We really, we do really appreciate the, the council support that we get. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Griffin. Questions, Councillor Vanivis? Um, on the 27 exhibits that you're unpacking at the moment, are, are they all interactive, hands-on, or, or most of them? Yes, and actually, um, the reason we went to the company outside of New Zealand for those exhibits is that there's not a company in New Zealand that could do it. And we went through a tender process, and Huttinger, which is one of the world's best interactive companies, um, came up with the best price. And all of them are interactive. And in fact, I was, they were unpacking one today. One of the, my favorites, there's, there's several really good ones, but um, there's two bikes, one of which has a skeleton on it. And as you cycle, you can see how the skeleton matches your actions. So it illustrates how the human body works. Um, all of the, I, I think we're going to raise our game with these interactives. Um, I'm, I'm seriously impressed by what I've seen. And on top of those 27, there's about another 10 interactives that we're building locally. And one of the, we, we think it will be the highlight of the exhibition is a New Zealand built six meter tall slide, um, which is modeled on DNA. And there's a secret DNA message encoded into it. Um, but if uh, back in England, um, about 10 years ago, the most popular exhibit that ever went into the Tate Gallery was a massive slide. Um, so we're teaching some science, but we're hoping it will become something that everybody wants to do. So, so the whole focus of the new, um, the new approach to discover, uh, to, well, it's actually called Tahura, the Otago Community Trust Science Centre. That's what it will be called when it opens. Um, the whole approach is focused on really teaching science in a fun and engaging way. And it links together for the first time the tropical forest with the science. So instead of having two slightly different areas, they're fully integrated, and it's all about the science that we can teach. So, I'm, as you can tell, I'm quite excited by it. <laughs> Are you also excited about the two neutron stars colliding, not just showing us how gold was made, but that they are the first evidence outside of black holes colliding of gravitational waves. Yes, and, and, it, and that's, uh, it, I, um, I'm on a, because I do media sometimes, I'm, I'm on a press release list, and I, when I woke up this morning, I had 50 emails from universities all over the world about the science of this thing. So it's a really big, this is a really big story for, for astronomers. And is the really big story gravitational waves or is it gold? Uh, well, no, actually the big story is for the very first time, um, astronomers have observed using telescopes the flash of light from colliding neutron stars. And the space telescope where I used to work have actually managed to take spectra of it and they've shown that gold has appeared. So it's, I mean, we've known that this is how the universe works, but this is the very first time we've been able to do science on it. Sorry, I, I really didn't intend to do an astronomy lecture today, but it's kind of, it's kind of a fun thing. <laughs> Thank you very Sorry. much. Appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you. Councillor Elder. You sound like you're a child in a <laughs> playground. Um, I'm just um, asking some questions about um, education in the classroom. In particular, um, I see you went to the Chathams, which yes. was very successful. I was just wondering what your plans are for getting to, say, Queenstown, Central Otago, and Southland, and Balclutha, and just around our, yeah. the Otago region? Well, we, we specifically focus our outreach efforts on the councils that fund us, and some of the other stuff that we do, like the Chathams, it's not just because we fancy a trip to the Chathams, but we put in a, a proposal for grant funding, and that, that trip was funded by the Ministry of Business, Innovation, and Employment, and they funded it because they see the skills that we have at the museum in terms of outreach, 
was something that, I mean, those, those kids in the Chatham Islands don't get much, no. to be completely honest. And on Pitt Island, where there's a school with just nine pupils, you know, they'd never seen anything like the science stuff that we did. So um, our focus is the councils that fund us, and that's why, by and large, the majority of the outreach mm -hmm. that we do is to schools in Waitaki, uh, Clutha, and Central. Um, and I understand there may be some potential funding in the future from Queenstown, but until that appears, we feel the best thing to do is serve the ratepayers of the cities, um, and, uh, sorry, the, of, of the council regions that fund us, because we want the ratepayers there to understand that we're, we, we think we're trying to offer value. Yes. Um, but having said that, um, we wouldn't necessarily exclude a school if they had a really compelling reason for us to go. And we do sometimes go to, to Southland and, and Canterbury. And often that's in partnership with the University of Otago, who have specific reasons for going to those areas. I hope that answers your question. Thank you. <coughs> yes. Kelsey Gary. Thank you, Mr Chair, and thank you for your unbridled enthusiasm, Ian, as always. Um, I've got two questions. I just wanted to explore a bit more the Chatham trip. I did read with great interest about that, and I'd love to hear, I wonder if you'd tell us a little bit more about that trip and, and the response you got and so forth. Yeah, um, we've got now, <coughs> I think, possibly the biggest team of um, science outreach pe people in the country at our museum. We've got about 10 people working in that area. And that's all externally funded. So that's not actually funded by the ratepayers. It's funded by grants and m money that we get from outside. And those people are very excited and they keep applying for, well, to sustain the, the group, they apply for funding. And the extreme science to the Chathams was a, an idea that they came up with. Um, after meeting, someone bumped into a teacher from the Chatham Islands at a conference. And they said, why don't you do this stuff with us? And we, we thought, well, why not put in a grant? And, and, and we got funding from not only the Ministry of Business, Innovation and Employment, but something called the Dodd Wall Centre for Research Excellence at the University mm -hmm. of Otago, who really do physics. Um, and they said, yeah, we'll put together a team, we'll fund a team of science outreach people. So although I went, I did the astronomy component, we had Amadeo, um, who is our fantastic science communicator, and, um, and Natalie, and Professor Hutchinson. So we had a combination of scientific lectures in the pub in the Chathams. With, um, we went to every, well, all three of the schools and we did presentations in the schools. We, we actually took a planetarium to Pitt Island School so we had to get in a fishing boat and go across for an hour and set it up. And so we wanted to, to create an experience that actually would be memorable and would give those kids an opportunity that they wouldn't necessarily always have. And also, to make sure that there's a lasting relationship. It's not just us kind of going there and running away. Um, part of the funding was to bring a teacher from the Chathams to the museum and work with our uh, education team to try and do some professional development so that they can go back and then take those lessons to the school kids for long term. So through the chair, um, was this the first time that these three schools had had an outreach arrive um, there? To th in such, um, the way we did it, yes, they, I mean, the Chathams does get visits from DOC and, you know, travelling experts, and they kind of go in a, an ad hoc way, but I believe this was the first time a whole team of outreach people went there with the specific aim of trying to take science to the masses there, Fantastic. although there's only 600 islanders, so it's not really a mass, but... Fantastic. And I had a second question, which was around uh, page 25 of your report um, and the visitor statistics. Do you have a further breakdown of... Um, visitors from out of uh, Dunedin uh, and locals? Yeah, in terms of most, of, and it varies according to the time of year. Um, during the winter season, we tend to get more locals. During the summer season, we tend to get more tourists on balance. Um, so on average, over the course of the year, the breakdown is roughly 60-40. So 60% from local, 40% from elsewhere. Uh, but it does vary. So in the summer, it's probably closer to 50-50. Um, Thank you. But we do keep monthly breakdowns of that. Thank you. It may say something about the local hospitality, but the Chatham Islands never has trouble attracting <laughs> visitors, whether they be senior bureaucrats or cabinet ministers. Um, Councillor Wiley. Thank you. Um, Dr Griffin, um, you actually had a very active period right across in the museum as well over the, um, during this report. When I read it, I see how um, engaged you were with the Cadbury Carnival. Can you just expand upon that? Yes, we've always done something around the, um, the period of the carnival uh, because it's a big boost for the city. And what we tend to do is uh, chocolate-themed activities. So, I mean, I think we mentioned in the report we, we had a little interactive exhibit that we built that rolled um, the chocolate balls down and that kind of thing. Um, and the observation is it, it seems to be something that's good for the city, and it's certainly 
a period when there's a visitor number bump for, at our museum, and particularly a bump around you know, the families. So um, it's certainly a positive thing, and we work to support it. Um, and like we do with the other festivals, like at Matariki, we do stuff at the museum. And I think it's really important that we as an institution reflect what's going on in the broader city and try where we can to kind of align our activities with, with other things that the city thinks strategically important. So it's a strong part of the July school holiday program? Absolutely, yeah. Okay. yeah. Um, you touched on it earlier about um, going to communities or uh, where <coughs> councils actually fund you. Um, and there was an article in the ODT um, a month or six weeks ago about Clutha and that. Can you just elaborate a bit more about that? Yes, well, stepping right back, I mean, as I, I kind of alluded to in the first page of the report, the museum's creating um, a long-term plan, a master plan. Um, over the last five years, uh, I've been director five years in May, what we've tried to do is invest, initially at least, in the, the things that are going to keep us going as a museum and sustainable. And that's, at the moment, the income-generating side of the museum. So things like the planetarium, Discovery World Tropical Forest, all of those things bring in a lot of money that offset the running costs. I mean, you, you, you're all aware that we get um, about $4 million of public money from the ratepayers, mostly of Dunedin, but from the other funding councils. We sort of match that with the, the income that we generate, and that allows us to do all these things. Um, but going forwards, we've got enough reserves at the museum to fund the redevelopment of Tangata Fenua, which is a very important gallery for us. But beyond that, we've got about seven other galleries, many of which haven't been touched in about 20 years, between 10, 20 years and five years. So we've got to redo those galleries over the next 10 years. So we're putting together a plan. And to come back to your point, um, as part of that, we know all of the councils are doing long-term planning processes at the moment. So I, myself, and along with a board member, either Graham Crombie or um, uh, Kate Wilson, have been visiting the councils and basically showing what the museum's doing, hoping that they see some value and talking about the, the future of the museum. Um, unfortunately, uh, Clutha Council um, feel that the present um, funding um, model that's used in the agreement between the different councils is unfair to the ratepayers of... Oh, sorry, sorry, that's really embarrassing. That's my wife, sorry. Um, um, I mean, councils, um, forgive me, sorry, I thought I'd turn that off. Um, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm in trouble anyway. Um, the um, Clutha Council, um, we get 3.9 million from Dunedin City Council. Clutha give us um, at, well, last year they gave us roughly 180,000. Um, Waitaki were about 50,000, and Central were about $25,000. So Clutha feel very strongly that their contribution is out of proportion to the size of their ratepayer base. And understandably, they're not very happy. Um, so despite the fact that when we made a presentation to the council, they said, we like your museum, we like what you're doing, um, subsequent to the presentation, they said, well, basically, we don't think this is fair, and we're going to pull back to... Um, the Act of Parliament funding agreement. Um, I think while that doesn't necessarily affect directly the funding of the museum, because under that same Act, whatever they don't pay has to be picked up by the other councils. Why didn't he know? Why didn't he know? Forgive me. Sorry, I didn't see you. Sorry. Um, so that creates, obviously, tension at the funding level. I mean, what I try to do as director is show that we're offering value to the ratepayers of all the districts that fund us, and in terms of the outlying districts like Clutha, Waitaki and Central, <clears throat> it's about the outreach support that we've offered. So we've upped our game there. We do more museum support. Um, our conservators go out and give them 40 hours free conservation support. Um, the science team are doing outreach in those areas. But of course the Clutha people are sitting there saying, well, we've got 200, well, roughly $180,000 going and it doesn't seem fair. So I've got some sympathy for their position, but from a museum perspective, I don't know what I can do to change it, and it's a political thing, I think. And maybe I think my understanding is that the mayoral forum has been discussing this, so I, I defer to um, the mayor on this. He probably knows more than I do. Uh, well, I defer to the chief executive of the <laughs> mayoral forum at which this was discussed. I wasn't uh, pregnant at the time, uh, but the chief executive was. So um, there was, um, there'd been quite a lot of work going on put in by the city council by Simon and his team. Um, sorry? Yeah, quite a bit of work had gone in um, in the last year um, by uh, Simon and his team, by us here at Dunedin City Council, 
Um, Clutha have for quite some time not been paying the amount in the previous heads of agreement because it did a um, and they, they felt it was a fair, it was uh, not not fair, um, and so they reverted. And that amount was about two hundred and ten thousand, and they reverted to paying the amount uh, that was in the original Act of Parliament, which was um, oh no, actually they 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 just felt it was unfair, and they paid about one hundred and eighty thousand, so about thirty thousand less. And, and we um, DCC picked up the difference. We have been trying to get a new heads of um, agreement pulled together. Uh, because that meant that all of the other councils except Clutha signed the heads of agreement and paid, and then Clutha paid the 180,000. They're bound by law to pay 127. Well, we we um, spent quite a lot of time and effort, a number of legal opinions, uh, trying to come up with an arrangement uh, that everybody, that all the councils felt fair, was fair, and um, uh, some of the councils that were paying less in Central Otago and White and and um, Waitaki certainly pay considerably less than Clutha. Um, obviously, not many not many councils none uh, were, were willing to have an increase. But one of the anomalies of the Act was that Queenstown Lakes District Council was simply never included in the first place as a contributor to the Otago Museum. Uh, so Queenstown Lakes have now said that they want to be a party. They've been getting some fantastic outreach uh, in Queenstown by Ian and his colleagues and have really realised that it, they would rather be part of that than not. And so they are, are paying on a per capita basis. And we tried to f come up with a formula that seemed reasonable on, to take into account both per capita and the distance travelled. DCC has always paid vastly the lion's share, largely because it's here in the city, we have more residents, and also people who are travelling into the city bring economic benefit uh, into the city uh, with them when they come and stay and, and visit. However, um, although the Mayor at, of Clutha was really clear in the mayoral forum that he was comfortable with the position that we reached, um, uh, which reduce, which basically made, uh, suggested that Queenstown start paying and reduce um, uh, the Clutha district official amount to the amount that they've been paying. So that seemed like um, pretty good all round and no one else has changed. Uh, uh, when that got to Clutha Council, they, they, didn't, they decided they didn't like it. And um, they have said they are now going to pay just the amount um, that is, that is uh, provided for in the Act. So when you add in the amount that Queenstown, Queenstown uh, we are hopeful, will remain in the heads of agreement, and the other councils have all indicated they're going to sign. So uh, Queenstown will begin to pay. Um, Clutha will reduce by by roughly twice what Clu what Queenstown is paying, and, and Dunedin is compelled to pick up the difference. It's about thirty thousand dollars. There's, um, there's no doubt we get um, you know we get a good service from Ian and his team, uh, and the act is set out that way. So. Thank you, Dr. Bidrose. Any further questions? Moved, Councillor Lord. Seconded, Councillor Wiley. Any discussion? I'll put it. Those in favour? Aye. Those against? It is carried. Thank you, Dr. Griffin. Thank you. Appreciate that. Item 7 Community and Culture Non Financial Activity Report for the quarter ended 30 September 2017. Mr. Hawke, Ms. Pinfold, welcome. Thank you. We're all yours if you want to make any opening comments. Uh, we're happy to answer questions from the report, but um, I will take the report as read by councillors. That's fine. Questions? Councillor Vanderbus. Just looking at the graph of Olveston usage uh, on page bottom of page 45, um, obviously winter's a difficult time when you've got beautiful gardens that aren't at their best and, and the uh, tree season isn't happening, etc. But I'm wondering, have you looked at the possibility? I know that I've been to a couple of wonderful recitals there, uh, even done a really nice recording there, whether more could be done uh, in winter in the way of uh, winter recitals, small conferences, or perhaps even master classes. I mean, it's a wonderful facility. It's as beautiful a place as anyone's ever going to get. 
and if you've got the staff in the building there anyway, is there any way that we could boost those quite low, um, what is it, June to September numbers? Uh, through the Chair, um, Councillor Vandervis is exactly right and, and that is certainly something that we are exploring is the opportunities, particularly during winter and the shoulder seasons, to, to have those sorts of cultural events, uh, meetings and, and already as you've referred there's uh, anything from yoga classes to life drawing to uh, soirees and so forth that are already being uh, held at the, um, at the house but uh, we'll, we'll constantly look for opportunities to expand that. Great. Uh, you, you just mentioned yoga classes. I hadn't even thought of that. Uh, I know my wife's quite keen. Are, are they on the, the website for Alveson or, or I, I, where do you find these things out? Uh, they should be. Councillor okay. Staines is uh, on the committee oh, as, cool. as is Councillor Geary and uh, acknowledging that. Great. Thank you very much. Further questions? I have, oh, Councillor Geary. Yep. Um, on page 47 of the report, um, item number 35, it's talking about uh, grant applications, and it says staff have been supporting groups through this process. Um, it's new and has posed challenges for some applicants. Um, and, and acknowledging that applying for grants is a, a special skill, can I just uh, ask that, uh, do you to expand what kind of support has been given to groups? Uh, perhaps uh, Joy, Joy Gunn's here and can perhaps answer, uh, provide some more detail. I mean, it, just in brief, it's really just talking people through through the application process, but Joy might have more to add to that. Sorry. I'll kneel, shall I? I <laughs> um, basically, we've gone to online only. That has caused a few problems for people who are used to a hard copy. So we've had some people not understand what an online form is, so we've been taking people through that step by step, and the staff have been um, working individually with people to support them to do that, um, both through face-to-face -face meetings and over the phone. Um, and we did have a few IT glitches in moving to online only, which we are uh, ironing out with the web team, but that did cause us a few hiccups on this first round of online only. So we're hoping that those will be resolved next time and we'll continue to support people who are not used to doing online applications and give them both face-to-face -face support, email and over the phone support. Thank you. Councillor O'Malley. Um, on point 22, the South Dunedin community pop-up, um, are we going to be tracking the use of that pop-up facility? And also um, the things inside the facility, how they're being used as we go towards designing what the permanent thing might look like. Yep. Uh, through the Chair, we're definitely uh, tracking that uh, usage on a monthly basis. In the first month, or short month, from the 8th to the 30th of September, we had uh, a bit over 3,500 uh, people through the door. We lent 500 items. Uh, in that in that sort of effectively three week period, and we had I think just from memory of over 130, 140 uh, information inquiries. And uh, since that time, the uh, the usage uh, staff report to me has continued to grow, and we're also getting other uh, community groups and and even council departments who are seeing the opportunity that the uh, the pop up presents to. Uh, to promote a particular service, uh, for example, social housing, people will be having a presence on a regular basis to um, to promote uh, to promote that uh, that particular aspect, and we are getting um, a, a good take up on the community hot desk, which was an idea. Essentially, we're trialling at that facility. So, just further to that, if I may, um, the the figures provided in the report are around visitation and it, there's commentary around how the, they're tracking down in line with the decline in borrowings, for, for want of a better word, but um, is that something that, do you think that that's the most meaningful um, data set, visitation, as opposed to, I mean, I'm just trying to get a sense of what the most useful information is out of those through the chair, there, there's there's quite a range of um, matrices we can use oh. to to evaluate performance, and uh, I guess typically um, borrowing and visitation have been amongst those. 
Um, but uh, what I haven't reported here, but we will also be tracking is uh, usage of the Wi-Fi um, and, and that type of um, that type of activity, and uh, figures that we're not personally collecting, but um, but would be useful as well, uh, would be the use of particular services such as the um, the access to the JP service. I've spoken to the group that's coordinating that, uh, and the, there's a JP service available from the pop-up uh, every Tuesday, uh, 11 till 1, and um, that while initially the take-up has been slow, that uh, that is improving, and uh, we're looking at ways to promote that. So it's sort of quite, it's a complex and quite broad area, but um, if there's any particular aspects of usage that the council had a, a, an interest in, we could certainly focus in on, on that in greater detail. Thank you, and, and, and just, um, I'm, I'm assuming that these are figures for all of our libraries, um, where the visitation numbers, rather than just the central library? Uh, correct, yes. Yeah. So it, would be, it might be helpful to get a breakdown of those numbers for the quarter too, just in terms of seeing how things are going in the outlying branches. Yep. Uh, Councillor Elder. Hi, Bernie. Um, I'm just, um, about the South Dunedin pop-up, just the outreach that's going on to encourage people to come in, who have you reached out to and, and what kind of responses you've been getting? Uh, through the Chair, we've, um, we've certainly uh, arranging for a, a leaflet uh, distribution to, to promote the, um, the access to the site. We have had um, people sort of just randomly coming in and not being quite sure uh, what, what to expect and, and then discovering that, um, in fact, it is a, 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 a multiple services and, and that people, in fact, don't need to come into town to, um, to access service centre facilities or to access internet and things like that. So it, initially we've just been doing um, word of mouth, we've been doing the leaflet, uh, we will be looking at a, um, a feature uh, in the, um, the associated with the South Dunedin Street Festival on the 4th of November to promote the availability of the hub and it will actually be open from uh, 10 to 12 on the, the day of the street festival. So um, I'll be personally uh, on, the, on the table and be promoting that people just pop down the road and have a look during that time, as will other staff, I'm sure. So have you done a leaflet drop in, the, in that whole area to letterboxes or whatever? We, we've residents? produced, we, we did an initial run of uh, 2,000 brochures and um, they, uh, the intention was that a, a person who is working in that, across that area will distribute those leaflets for us and we'll just uh, check whether that is sufficient or whether we need to redo that and do another 2,000 and try other areas. So we're just sort of gently trying to, um, to promote the availability. Thank you. Can I, can I just add to that, to say that, that word's already getting out and um, we've had requests from a number of groups to use the facility and the next meeting of the South Dunedin Stakeholder Group, they've, they're holding their next meeting there, so the word's already out in the community. That's excellent, thank you. <laughs> Any further questions? Somebody would like to move the report? Move Councillor Benson Pope, seconded Councillor Elder. Any discussion? Councillor O'Malley. Actually, just a quick comment to follow up with the community pop-up hub, is that we, we sometimes refer to the word as a library, and I think that we've known it's moved well beyond that now at this point, so I'm sure you're doing it, but it'd be nice to make sure you capture all the metrics as we go forward. Thanks. All those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Thank you. Item number eight, Aratoi and City of Literature update, January through June 2017. Welcome back. Uh, again, um, we'll take the uh, report as read, and but happy to expand on any, any items in the report, and uh, particularly the attachment uh, that uh, Council may wish more information on. Excellent. Questions? Councillor Gary. Oh, thank you. Um, Mr Hook, uh, could you just tell us a little more about the um, very exciting development of a strategic plan for the Dunedin City of Literature that is under development? Have you got any other comments to make on that? Because um, uh, obviously that is a very exciting step forward. Yep. 
Uh, through the Chair, uh, the, um, the development of a strategic plan was certainly something that we identified uh, there was a need for some time ago. It, it has taken a little bit of a back seat this year because we've had uh, two very labour intensive activities that have been taking place this year. The first one was uh, Dunedin's involvement in the uh, Bologna uh, Children's Book F Festival and that was uh, highly successful. Uh, a, event which uh, which brought interest from publishers not only across New Zealand but Australia as well and has um, provided a profile for uh, New Zealand and particularly Dunedin authors to um, to to sort of be be more visible in the the world community so uh, certainly our director Nikki Page spent um, many weeks uh, working and preparing for that and, and during that time the strategic plan took a back seat and, um, and once that, that process was completed, the, the work for the upcoming uh, Creative Cities Southern Hui uh, very quickly replaced it. So uh, Council would be aware that between the 29th of November and the 2nd of December this year, we've got a four-day uh, Creative Cities extravaganza, really, where the first day is the Centre for the Book Symposium, which has already been happening in previous years, but is packaged as part of this four-day event. The, the next two days are the UNESCO Creative Cities uh, Hui, and then on the Saturday is the Aratoi Hui to reflect on achievements in Aratoi and to uh, consider uh, forward directions. So um, there has been quite a, a lot of work been going into the development of the, the program and all the arrangements around it. So I'm sorry the, uh, the strategic plan has taken second billing to those, but has by no means been forgotten. So we will we will continue to work on that. Thank you. And I had a subsequent question, um, and that was around on page 62. Um, you talk about the Bologna um, book fair, which we've heard about, which uh, was very exciting. I just wondered, were the donating authors given feedback about how successful that was? Um, because I know there were a lot of local um, authors who donated books and it seemed that that would be wonderful feedback for them and very exciting. Through the chair, I, I believe that that was the case, but I, I, without speaking to Nikki, I, I wouldn't like to say 100% that, um, that everyone has, uh, has received that feedback, but uh, I believe that has been the case. Councillor Vanders. Pardon me. Page 59 talks about Artache um, and uh, a, a project designed to increase audience numbers and says that it's been very highly successful, uh, modelled on the Auckland model. Can you give me a wee bit of detail? I'm very interested to know how you propose to go about increasing audience numbers. It's quite often a tricky thing to do. Um, what was the Auckland model and, and how, do you, how do you intend to integrate it into the Fringe in 2018? Councillor Van Vis, thank you for that question. I might look to Joy if she's still here. No, okay. It's right. It's a it's a program offered through the economic development. So Anthony Deeker um, has been primarily involved with that. Um, can I undertake to get some information from uh, and a bit more information and to feed that back to? Yeah, Council? no, it would be lovely just to see what what the Auckland model was. Um, and it might be, you know, if it, if it really has been as successful as it says here, it might be useful for other areas of council um, operations as well. Thank you. I, I can't speak to the success or otherwise, but the model is roughly uh, set up by a woman uh, in Auckland and um, she gets artists to sell um, cheap work, basically, you know, under $500, and they set it up in a bar and their DJs playing and artists are present and the idea is it's trying to make um, work more accessible and affordable and trying to develop markets for artists, um, early career artists and mid-career artists in an environment outside of the white wall of the gallery space. That's loosely the, and she, they did a pilot here at the start of this year in March. So it's very much just visual arts then? Yeah, it's focused yeah. around visual arts, yeah. Okay, thank you. No oh, I have a question. Um, have you had any official communication with uh, the Mayor of Wellington City apropos of their um, overtures towards UNESCO City of Literature designation status? Uh, in a word, no. no. No contact at all from Wellington on that, um, that proposal. But you're aware of... 
the, the my sentiment. Own, my only awareness was through the um, through the media. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Elder. Just um, anything could happen. Ex exhibition of Dunedin Art and Fashion in Shanghai in May. I was just wondering um, what kind of opportunities came out of that. Did artists, you know, get more work commissioned? You know, is there any sort of tangible kind of results out of it? Um, through the chair again, this is the, the detail. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have with me. It, it is an enterprise to need in program, but again, okay. um, I'm happy to follow up and get a bit more. Uh, Sue has. Um, I only have. There was one artist that we. Um, particularly a, a Dunedin guy who spends time in Australia and time in Shanghai that we particularly got involved and he sent me a note on WeChat um, which I only really used to correspond with him and um, he said that it had been fantastic for him and he had three uh, shows uh, coming on stream as a result of that so he was pretty excited um, he thought it had been good uh, so we only have, we don't collect that data we don't ask them to tell us so we only have what they informally feed back but they they did get a lot of foot traffic and uh, so so the exhibition was judged by the garden to be successful uh, and um, and they have raised the possibility of having other Dunedin and New Zealand things there as well I thank you Anything further? Someone, someone want to move? Move Councillor Lord, seconded Councillor Gary. Any discussion? Um, I'd just like to take this opportunity to thank um, the staff involved for delivering this work. Um, I think the report shows that we're getting a, a tremendous amount of output for what is um, a fairly marginal investment um, on Council's part. Um, through both particularly in the City of Literature work but also in, in the delivery of, of the Outer Toy work. So um, I'd like to pass on my thanks um, to your team, Bernie and to Nikki Page, um, for the stuff that they've done. And I think particularly given um, the overtures that are being made by a capital city, it's um, a behoven on us to make the most of uh, our City of Literature status while we remain uh, the only UNESCO creative city uh, in the country. Um, and I'll let people ruminate on that as we head into uh, discussions around our 10-year budgets. Um, with that, I'll put it. All those in favour? Aye. Those against? That's carried. Thank you. Part B items. Mr McCracken. This is the Public Art Framework 2017 to 2022, one of uh, the initial actions uh, of uh, Aratoi Otapoti, our creative future. Any opening remarks? If there's anything left to be said? Possib possibly, um, I, although the report is fairly straightforward, um, hopefully quite open and shut, um, but just to, uh, just to speak to it a little bit, um, uh, this is obviously the, uh, the report back for the uh, public engagement process. Um, this has been a, a, um, a project that has been um, worked on by council staff for quite a long time now. So we, um, we're in the back straight, if not at the finish line, in terms of the, um, in terms of the strategy work. Um, so we've taken, um, we've taken the documentation out to uh, public consultation. Uh, that happened uh, between June and August. Um, and we've also completed a people's panel in that time frame. Um, we got good response uh, to both of those, um, both of those surveys. 112 uh, people uh, took part in the um, in the public survey, and 132 as part of the people's panel. Uh, we asked people about the vision um, for public art as we saw it, and some detailed questions uh, about the action plan identified in the framework. Um, and I've appended those. Uh, reports from those surveys um, as part of the documentation you've got in front of you. Um, so you can see the detailed responses that people made uh, as well as uh, get a sense of the commentary that um, was uh, attached uh, to those responses. Um, but in short, the feedback has been predominantly positive um, and very supportive of the way that we want to move forward um, and make progress with a new public art program. 
Um, so um, uh, that's, uh, that's the outcome of the feedback. I'm really happy to, um, to uh, respond to questions. Questions, councillors? Councillor Gary. Thank you very much, Mr Chair. Um, I was interested, I uh, was present when you made a presentation to a community board and I wondered um, what the engagement in community board areas was like on this. I'd have to check uh, the data. Are you asking me? Just what from the, memory. Oh, the, the responses from yes. the various. Well, I, I probably caught up with a few of you around um, those community boards. Um, they were really, they were really positive. Um, you know, people had, uh, um, I guess, aspirations for public art in their own communities, um, which was which was great. Um, and uh, and. Um, yeah, uh, suggestions about particular artworks that they'd like to see, um, artists that we might use, um, but predominantly the conversations were productive, um, fruitful and, um, and positive. Thank you. Further questions? Councillor Elder. Um, it's a fantastic strategy and, and, it, and its time has come, looking at Melbourne, Wellington, New Plymouth and Auckland. Um, I was just wondering, just asking about um, the ongoing community input, because you've got um, the creative um, group, um, and looking at Auckland, Wellington, New Plymouth, Melbourne, um, they have kind of like a working group, including, say, someone who's really good at sculpt, you know, a public figure that's really good at uh, an expert in sculpture, um, someone like someone from the Polytech and the university in those areas. And I was just wondering whether it's worthwhile having a, like, a bit like the, um, the steering group for social wellbeing, having a, a bit of a steering group that's got a specific emphasis on that, especially as we're work going forward in developing the centre city plan and tertiary precinct and all, all those kind of things going in to the future, or do you think that's covered? Um, that's not that's not something that we identified, you know, through the drafting of of the documentation. Um, nor the initial kind of consultation, nor this consultation. I think, for me, um, um, having having the two things that you've talked about, I guess expert um, participation in this process is really key. And mm. um, and the the feeling, um, well, the, the 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 way that we wanting to move forward is actually using in-house expertise. We've got a lot of in-house expertise in this organisation in terms of, um, you know, putting up structures, in terms of art expertise, um, you know, consenting, you know, all of the things that are going to trip you up in a public art commission, we've actually got um, an abundance in, in this organisation. Um, the second thing that I think is really, you know, that you've raised is community input. Um, so one of the key tenants of, of this framework is actually doing what we're doing in a really public and transparent way um, using uh, the public art model, uh, public lab model, sorry, um, where, whereby we actually test ideas for sites um, and, uh, and, you know, particular works in, in, a, in a public setting, in a community setting. So that would look like, you know, a potentially a space at the art gallery or a space in the fringe office by the bus stop where people can stop in, you know, waiting for a bus or in a public library. Um, you know, MRI, anywhere where we can actually go into the community and and have a designated space mm -hmm. to, um, you know, to put up some drawings, to put up some plans, um, to put up some, some ideas and uh, solicit some feedback, um, you know, like I said, investigate and test those ideas. So in terms of, in terms of you know, taking the public along with us, um, and I'd like to think that, um, that what, we've, what we've put forward um, certainly does that. Um, the other question was, um, we have groups that are passionate about public art um, and, you know, we've got, um, would they have the opportunity to still kind of like fundraise or have a particular project and bring it to you so that 
that could be driven from the community as well. Yeah, I'm, the, the I'm, frame, I'm looking at that. The framework, the framework, um, you know, captures what might ha that that would be a gift, wouldn't it? I think. You know, yes. Um, you know, it does capture um, a process to make some evaluations about the appropriateness, um, you know, the site res readiness, the health and safety, you know, whatever um, around a gift. So absolutely, that is um, that is. Uh, you know, a possibility um, or welcomed, encouraged, um, possible um, under the under the framework. So the, yes, because it's looking like a very successful model out there that's working, mm. like with Dunedin Street Art and other projects that that, that have come to the fore. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, the the framework is is, is the scope of the framework is is is, is around um, is around public property, public land. You know, so if someone wants to do the street art, is a little different in that it's on, you know, it's on mostly or predominantly pub, private, uh, private uh, buildings. But um, you know, and if someone wants to do something on their land, well, you know, all we'll power to them. But um, this is around, you know, public, um, you know, public ownership, and it's also it's also um, sculpture that the council would eventually own. Uh, yes. And have to ensure and to maintain, and all of those things that come along with ownership. So, you know, so we do want to have a robust process around around that gifting process, or around working with other agencies who might want to fundraise, um, which is great. Um, but we want to be really sure about what it is that we're taking into into um, into ownership for the council. Thank you for those answers, Kim. You look, Councillor Vincent Pope. You're looking for an amended motion. Um, well, I'm happy to move that the committee oh, recommend, sure. recommend to council that it approves and adopts the public art framework. That's fine. And um, noted. Um, I do have a couple of questions. Is anyone? I'll come back to that though. Anyone else? Just me. Um, Mr. McCracken, there are a couple of comments in the verbatim feedback and um, around um, the role of. Mana whenua input into programming this work, and the response uh, seems to, the response in the Murray impact statement that they'll be mana whenua will be consulted where appropriate. I'm paraphrasing, yeah. um, and that that feedback will be provided through the Runaka representation on uh, the Creative Dunedin Partnership, and the, the uh, there are two uh, representatives on that group. Um, so, how do you see? Those group are you, is, is the commissioning group going to the CDP group for approval um, f for their program. I'm just trying to understand how that gives weight to the concerns or mitigates the concerns that were raised. I mean, we do have a we you know we have a bureaucratic process that we can follow, um, which is probably articulated, um, you know, in the report. Uh, I, I'd probably comment that each each work is going to be. Is going to have its own idiosyncrasies, and some works um, might require or will require a lot more mana whenua input than that. Um, what what we haven't done this is a this is a broad a broad framework, um, and it allows us to kind of push um, in in different areas if we need to, if we need more consultation, if we need. Um, you know, whatever. So, um, you know, I would imagine that um, that uh, you know, wahitapu um, or uh, works that have a um, that have a significant um, you know naitahu or Māori component um, would require um, would require us to um, to work with mana whenua on what that process might look like. I guess the difference as I see it is that one is trying to get the right permissions and protocols and one would be um, having a having input into the commissioning of the works or the programming of the works in, yeah, in general. I, well yeah, that, that might look that that <coughs> It, that might look like um, you know working closely with the with uh, the Runaka or um, or iwi group um, you know depending um, on on that commission if if that's I mean part of the part of the process from the get go um, will will be as I see it will be to to uh, approach this really strategically um, and put together a you know a five ten maybe fifteen year plan for commissioning uh, which might involve five 
five artworks, which will do different things and meet different community needs. And, and you know, one of those is, is going to be around celebrating our, our Ngāi heritage. Um, you know, so the process, the process for that particular work will necessarily be different um, to, to, you know, potentially to the others. Um, I mean, I, we haven't been prescriptive in, in, in a, like I said, in a bureaucratic process um, to, to, to cover off how, you know, we'll A, B, C, D, you know, these steps. Um, we'll be guided definitely by the CDP um, and we'll be guided by the, the process that the community kind of lays out for us. Um, we'll be working really closely <coughs> with, with Naitahu on, 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 on the programme. And just finally, while I mean there are specific groups mentioned in terms of the DCC officers that are involved in this process, that will be flexible to allow different I think it staff has to, to I come think in. It, I think it has to be. Um, you know, some projects are going to be really easy, and they'll be they'll be quite simple, and some are going to be much more. You would imagine are going to be much more complex, and so that core group is going to have to add and bolster its numbers with the uh, the expertise um, that it needs. Great, thank you. No further questions. Um, an amended recommendation um, moved by Councillor Benson Pope. I'm happy to second that. Uh, would you like to speak to your motion? Any discussion? We're all comfortable with that. Okay. Amendment. I'll put it. All those in favour? Aye. Those against? It is carried. Thank you. For the second to last time, hopefully. <laughs> Item number 10, New Zealand Masters Games Operational and Financial Status. <laughs> Welcome, Ms. Gunn, Ms. Castillo. Noting Councillor Newell is withdrawing from this item. Thank you. Um, your opening, any opening comments you wish to make? Um, I think we take it as the um, report is read and we're open to any questions that councillors may have. Thank you. Questions? Councillor Lord. I was just a wee bit intrigued to see that there's only 351 people so far uh, registered, and you said that's uh, uh, certainly on par or above other years. So you expect a real increase just to come in? Is it uh, people late they wait. entries? Yeah. They wait. And that, um, when I left the office this afternoon, we had 700 entries, and um, that's 58 above where we were the last games, 2016. Our early bird closes 30th of November, and that's when most of our entries come in, and we get a really good idea of where we're sitting. So the difference between, was it 351, it said in the report, or did I read that wrong? So, so now to 758, that's just obviously... Just from when the report was written to yep. today. Yep. Oh, that's amazing. Councillor Wiley. Um, thank you. Um, just following up on that same question, have you, are you tracking how much out of town versus uh, local registrations? It was, so we're sitting about half and half at the moment, which is where we generally sit um, for most games years. One thing that we have noticed is there's an increase in Auckland um, competitors, and we really do think that reflects on having the World Masters Games in Auckland, and it's raised the profile of Masters events. Okay. And I've heard across the airwaves um, a lot of sort of media uh, or advertising for the uh, Christchurch Casino Gold Noldy Sports in April. It looks like they've sort of tried to hijack the Masters Games concept. Yeah. Um, that, to a certain extent, it is a, a different type of event. So the Masters, um, the Golden Oldies is run by a travel agency and it's a, it's a package deal that people have to buy. So a lot of our local New Zealand netball, it's really based at, um, aimed at overseas competitors, like our netball teams and our football teams and that. It's quite expensive for them to enter. They, it's two around $2,000 a package per entrant. So they do really aim for those overseas competitors with a few New Zealand ones and that. So um, our netball numbers are actually tracking ahead of 
where we were this time last year, so we're hoping it's a positive sign. Okay, thank you. Further questions? No? Anyone like to move the recommendations? Amended as per <laughs> the screen. Moved by Councillor Wiley, thank you. Seconded Councillor Elder. Any discussion? There being none, I'll put it. All those in favour? No. Those against? That is carried. Thank you. Thank you. Item 11, uh, the Dunedin brackets, New Zealand, close brackets, Masters Games Trust, CCO exemption. <laughs> Councillor Newell <laughs> still withdrawing. <laughs> Councillor Benson Pope? No. I don't have a question, but I'm happy to move. It. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Um, the only question I has, have is, um, can the exemptions, are the exemptions not able to be made enduring, maybe not in perpetuity, but more often than this? Um, part of the Local Government Act is it has to be reviewed every three years. Okay. So. That's fine. Good Thank idea, you. though. <laughs> <laughs> Moved, Councillor Benson Pope. Second, Councillor Lord. Oh, sorry, any further questions? No? Uh, any discussion? I'll put it. All those in favour? Aye. Those against? That is carried. Thank you. Item 12 is items for consideration by the chairperson. Anything that people want to raise at this point? Councillor Vandevers. I'm just wondering if we could get an update on where the Mosgiel pool um, has progressed to so far. It seems to me to have been going on for quite a long time now. And if it goes on for too long, I wonder whether the uh, private funding that uh, might be available there might get a wee bit tired of the process. So if it's possible just to perhaps give us an update, either on email or, or at the next meeting, on, on where that's going and, and if we have a timeline for it. Yeah, that's fine. I can defer that to the infrastructure staff who will be able to respond to that in due course. Unfortunately, there was no one here to answer those questions at the meeting yesterday. Um, but yeah, Sorry, but that's definitely an infrastructure rather than a community well, issue? It, it sits with parks and recreation okay. as a group, but right. um, I can forward that on. That's fine. Thank you. Anything, f anything else? No. Uh, okay, as per the order paper, I'll move that we, the public moves into non-public uh, for the consideration of the final item on our agenda. Seconded, uh, Councillor Elder. Uh, all those in favour? Aye. Those against? That is carried. Thank you. Aye.